Field of view is how much peripheral vision you have. The bigger your FOV, the further away from your crosshair you can see. Because sometimes it isn't enough to be able to see enemies when they're in front of you. Occasionally it can help to be able to see them to the sides. Especially in an arena shooter game like Quake 3, where your enemies can come at you from anywhere. So it helps to be able to see as much as you can around your character. Take this clip here for instance. We're not seeing what Shrock is seeing, so his deagle flick shot looks very sus indeed. But the chances are he was simply playing on a 16x9 aspect ratio screen, which gives him a wider field of view and therefore he was able to see the enemy stepping out from behind that far side of the pillar. Or maybe he's just cheating. What do I know? So you'd think that all players would want the highest field of view settings possible, wouldn't you? But in Counter-Strike it's often the opposite. Many pros would rather have a smaller view, and then to stretch out across a wide monitor. So they see less, but everything they do see appears bigger on screen. And thus easier to hit. Maybe. Speaking of changing your field of vision, this video is sponsored by NordVPN, which will let you change your internet location to one of NordVPN's 5000 plus servers across the world, which you can trial today thanks to NordVPN's 30 day money back guarantee. Using a VPN to change your location and IP address grants new opportunities and experiences, even in a game like CSGO. Of course it's worth noting that gaming from another location will increase your ping, but there may be instances where a higher ping will still be worth it. A VPN can be used to distance your location away from a problem region, or to prioritise finding games in a country that you found to be friendlier, or easier. You could jump to a country where it's currently 5 in the morning, where servers are empty to let you more easily grind Operation Riptide missions with a friend against bots. Always wanted to know what Japan's like, but can't afford the flight? Well, NordVPN can't help you with that but can let you match on a Japanese server with Japanese people. And of course the usual IP and location anonymity benefits of a VPN also apply when browsing the internet. Take the three clicks or so required to check out the link in the description to learn more. So field of view all starts with knowing about aspect ratios, which is how many pixels there are across the screen versus how many pixels there are going vertically down the resolution you're currently using. I will be telling you what FOV each aspect ratio is later on, but you won't care because it's worthless knowledge. A field of view of 42 means nothing. It's kind of like knowing the answer to the meaning of life but without knowing the question. Or in this case, the aspect ratio you're using. Take your computer monitor. The chances are it's a 1080p screen since that's currently what's most popular. If you use it properly, then you're using an aspect ratio of 16 by 9 because the screen is 1920 pixels across, you can count them if you don't believe me, and if you get that number, divide it by 16 and then multiply it by 9, it becomes 1080, which is the number of pixels going down the screen. Hence, 16 by 9 aspect ratio. So that's it, simple stuff. But just because your monitor is 1920 by 1080, you don't have to stick to that. You can choose another resolution which may have a different aspect ratio, and many pro players do decide to do that. So there are two main aspect ratios you should know about, 16x9 is the modern standard, and 4x3 is the old standard that CRTs used to be, and is what most pros still use in Counter-Strike. 4x3 is the same as 16x12, which sounds like it's the same as 16x9 but taller, doesn't it? But Counter-Strike doesn't treat it like that, it instead treats it like 16x9 but with the edges cut off, so it's more like 12x9. Then there are less common aspect ratios as well, like 16x10, which is somewhere between the two and is a slightly older widescreen standard, which I still really like, less so for gaming but more for desktop applications. And then the black sheep of the aspect ratios is the lone resolution of 1280x1024, which for some inexplicable reason is 5x4, which makes it even squarer than 4x3 is, despite it being listed in the menu as being that. But it isn't, it's a lie. So if you want thick models, then use 5x4. But if you want the biggest FOV, then stick to 16x9 or go further still by investing in an ultra wide monitor. Now I have my opinions on this matter, which you're going to disagree with, so instead of me babbling on and making lots of enemies, let's instead look at what the pros are using. Because while they're wrong not to use the same settings as I would, it doesn't seem to be holding them back too much. ProSettings.net lists 418 pro player setups, and I've got to say, I was impressed with this data. Even the data that looks kind of wrong still manages to hold up under scrutiny. This list probably isn't perfect or completely up to date, but they receive corrections and appear to respond to them, and honestly, I think it's the best all-in-one resource we can use to get a gist of what the pro players are using. So well done to Pro Settings, and thank you to everybody who helps them to maintain it. So by far the most popular aspect ratio used is 4x3. Almost three quarters of all pro players on the list use it, despite none of them actually being on a 4x3 monitor. At least I don't think they are unless they're still lugging a 20 year old CRT to events. A distant second place is the aspect ratio of 16x9, which means that just 14% of pros are using their monitor to display an image that's the same shape as that monitor. 
Next down the list is 16x10, meaning that an additional 6% of pros still use widescreen, but slightly stretched. And last is 5x4, meaning that 4% of pros use the most stretched vanilla option. And then there are a few weirdos which I'll be naming and shaming later. So isn't this interesting? There does appear to be a sweet spot, and one that most players don't bother going beyond. There's nothing stopping you from using any aspect ratio you like. Sure, it's not wholly convenient, but you can shape your screen to be whatever you want it to be. You could make it square if you wanted. You could literally game at 9x16 if you wanted to. The only limiting factor is how much ridicule you're willing to endure. So I think the appeal of 4x3 is that it's readily available in the options menu without needing to do any weird tweaks. And also, unlike the even stretchier 5x4 option, 4x3 comes in a number of different resolutions, which I guess caters better for personal preference. Let's take a look at the resolution that the pros are using. The highest resolution present on the list was 2560x1440, which is the conventional 16x9 aspect ratio, but a resolution above that. This is, apparently, played by a grand total of two pro players, and they are Shroud and Flom, in case you were wondering. They're using 1440p monitors, but it doesn't mean they're using that resolution. Maybe they just like the larger sizes of those monitors, but it does seem weird to specifically go for a 1440p monitor over a standard 1080p one if you're not then going to use it for that purpose. They're certainly both using PCs that are capable of running CSGO well at 1440p, but yeah, if we pretend those two players don't exist, the rest of the pros on the list game at 1080p or lower. 1080p by PC gaming standards is already low, but it is coming back into fashion as the hardware shortages continue. Yet in CSGO, even at the highest level of play, using 1080p is still on the high side. Only 11.5% of pros chose to use their monitor at its intended resolution. The most popular resolution, played by 41% of pros, was 1280x960, and 25% still used 1024x768. Both of these are classic 4x3 aspect ratios, meaning that they need to be stretched in order to fill a modern display. And yet, almost three quarters of all pros on the list use a 4x3 aspect ratio, and three quarters of those use it stretched. So the 16x9 and 4x3 aspect ratio players make up the majority, but 6% of pros play at 16x10, which is somewhere between the two. Kind of like a modern screen, but slightly taller. Of the weirder resolutions used, Dav Cost supposedly uses 1600x1024, which I've never heard of before and would be a 25x16 aspect ratio, which if true would make it a whisker narrower than 16x10, but not by much. I looked up some streams of his, and when measured, they equated exactly to 16x10, which is a bit less weird. And the other weird resolution that I saw being used was 970x800. I thought this had to be a joke, but I reached out to pro player Hari, and sure enough, he says he uses it, he likes it, and was first shown it by an older pro player back around 2016. This makes it an aspect ratio of 97 by 80, which is the squarest of them all. So well done to you, Hari. May your screen be stretched and your targets thick, you weirdo. So looking at the overview, it's not like pros are favouring the most extreme settings. Instead, most of them fall in the middle somewhere. Firstly, by using an aspect ratio of 4x3, which isn't even the squarest of the supported resolutions. And secondly, they favour middling resolutions, which are neither as high nor as low as they could be. If it's about getting the highest FPS possible, then they choose 640x480. But clearly this is too low for players to want to use. So it seems like they want at least some degree of clarity, but then if clarity was all that mattered, then they'd be using 1920x1080, which most are not. All else being equal, I'm surprised that 1280x1024 isn't more popular than it is, since it's kind of like the one that most pro players use, but slightly clearer and slightly more stretched. It's amusing to me that players seem so against using 5x4 aspect ratio when it seems to stand for everything they seem to want. And I know I said earlier that you'll dislike my thoughts on this matter, but this is too convenient a moment not to share them with you. All of this suggests to me that pros are using the settings they're using not because it's the best in any measurable way, but simply because it's what they're used to using. I think that today's generation of pros, when they first started out, looked to see what the previous generation of pros were using and they copied them. Because why not? And maybe this has been going back for decades. What we're seeing here could be the product of monitor design choices that date back 15 or 20 years even. Maybe even more than that. Which is incredible to think about. But because today's monitors are physically wider than they used to be, it gives today's players one additional choice they must make. Stretched or black bars. Because older, squarer aspect ratios, if displayed on today's screens, should have black bars either side of them. And yet, almost 75% of players who use a squarer aspect ratio still end up stretching it to fill the whole screen anyway. Why? As in, why go to all this effort when you could just game at 16x9 instead? So the primary reason that I can think of is because it makes everything appear bigger and fatter. 
and if an enemy looks fatter then surely that makes them easier to hit. But then if size is all that matters then we'd all be gaming on 70 inch screens, or be sat 6 inches away from our monitors. So the reason people like stretched must be because it stretches them only in one dimension, instead of two. But I will just say, if a player looks fatter, they will also move faster across your screen, which in my opinion negates any advantage of them looking bigger in the first place. But whatever. Pros use stretched, and they're pro. So there. But even somebody as cynical and as miserable as myself can see a real, tangible benefit to their being stretched displays. Lower resolutions equals higher frame rates, equals more responsive mouse movements, and thus better overall ability. And by lopping off the sides and by stretching the remainder, you are viewing fewer pixels, which would cut down on processing requirements. But I do think this benefit is diminishing as computers get faster. It isn't as important as it might have been 5 or 10 years ago to get the highest frame rate possible. And I'll acknowledge that even well beyond the refresh rate being used, higher frame rates do result in a smoother, more up-to-date and more consistent display of the action that's going on. And this, to me, is the most logical reason for why people believe they perform better on lower and stretched resolutions. The 4x3 aspect ratio is just an unfortunate byproduct of this. So I would urge players to give native resolution another chance, as I do believe that these days a modern computer has the power to still deliver a silky smooth experience at these higher resolutions. And if frame rate is the reason that lower resolutions are used, then I'd recommend trying 720p instead, which would run even faster than the current most popular resolution, in addition to offering a wider field of view, and making more sense given the shape of modern monitors. But right now, only one pro uses this resolution, so I'm at a loss as to why pros use the settings they do, because they all seem to be a compromise in so many ways. But stretched isn't the only option being used. Next most popular after that, and still more popular than using the aspect ratio your monitor is designed for, is to use black bars which is the same as stretched, only not stretched. You're still gaming on a lower resolution, you're still gaming with a narrower aspect ratio, it's just now you've got permanent black bars down the sides of your screen. It means that you're wasting your screen's real estate, but I understand players who use this better than I do the ones stretching their screen, because at least with black bars it's quite clear that people gaming like this do so because they find peripheral vision distracting, and would rather focus on whatever's right in front of them and to have that in the central region of their display. Now the bit you've been waiting for, let's calculate the field of view. For this I made a custom map and thought it would be fun to make it using a picture of a protractor, yet I can't shake the feeling that I might have already done this before at some point, at least once, and then I get all sad thinking about how pathetic it is that I've made several protractor based maps in my life, so far. But whatever, it works. The key thing to note here is that the vertical field of view does not change. No matter which resolution or aspect ratio you're using, you always have a vertical field of vision of 74 degrees. It means your choice of aspect ratio will only influence how far around the sides you will be able to see. The largest of these is if you use three screens, obviously, which would be an aspect ratio of 16 by 3 offering a horizontal viewing angle of 152 degrees. So there you have it, the obvious. The wider your aspect ratio, the higher your field of view. Like I warned you about at the beginning, these numbers don't really mean much on their own. I still think bigger is better, but then I also use a VPN to grind against bots, so what do I know? Most pros still favour settings which grant them less. I thought we might as well cover the refresh rates as well, given that it's to do with monitors and it's in the data right here so why not talk about it. And it's interesting that almost every pro player on the sheet uses a 240Hz monitor, and we're beginning to see the very recent new standard of 360Hz creeping in as well, which I expect will grow as time goes on. The most surprising thing for me was that only one player on this list is still using a 144Hz monitor, which for a long time was the accepted gaming standard. Given the diversity with the aspect ratios, and the difficulty in keeping a spreadsheet of this size updated, I thought there would be more stragglers than this, and more people with odd preferences. But no. Unlike Field of View, pros are almost all gaming on new monitors and high refresh rate standards. Of course I have to point out that players probably don't have much of a say about which monitor they use. On a per team basis they're likely kitted out with a certain monitor from a particular brand as part of a sponsorship deal. So what's documented here is less about personal preference and more about what's generally accepted as being the current standard for gaming monitors and refresh rates. I don't think it's controversial to say that higher refresh rates are better. There will be diminishing returns, but you'd be hard pressed to find a player who would go out of their way to game on a refresh rate that's lower than what's available for them to use though I bet there's at least one pro out there somewhere whose PC is still set to 60Hz. Because there's always one. Speaking of which, one player seems to be gaming from the future on a thousand hertz. Clearly this is a mistake in the data because no monitor can handle that just yet. The player in question is MHL, his monitor only goes up to 240Hz, so I think, in the absence of that information on his profile, the thousand hertz here refers to his mouse's polling rate. Pro settings, 
please fix. Unless MHL has actually discovered a way to game at a thousand hertz, in which case, please teach me your secrets. The other reason I wanted to talk about refresh rates, and why I'm so surprised about the unity on display here, is because refresh rates used to be dictated by the resolution that was being used. On CRT displays, the lower your resolution, the higher your refresh rate could be, which was yet another reason why players would be better at lower resolutions. This isn't the case anymore with modern monitors using decent connections, but I wondered if some ancient knowledge about refresh rates would have been passed down the generations along with the aspect ratios. Apparently not. I'll move on. So in conclusion, yeah, I've made it pretty clear that I don't see the benefit to using a 4x3 or stretch display, but the truth of the matter is that most pros use these settings, and it's not stopping them from being pro. So you're free to disagree with me, but I think it's done out of habit and believe that we could make the game better by introducing a field of view slider. Many games already have this, many competitive games, and I think the very fact that pros use such weird aspect ratios and resolutions proves that they would benefit from such a feature in CSGO. Maybe have a separate vertical and horizontal slider, so you could still have the same stretched image, but still using your monitor's native resolution. When the suggestion of a field of view slider was brought up a few years ago, the argument against it was that players would use the highest possible, when clearly from the data we can see that this wouldn't be the case. It might even be that the opposite occurs. So there are good reasons for adding a field of view slider. What would the downsides be? It might introduce some more bugs if the slider goes too high and breaks the vision in some way. And there would need to be some design decisions surrounding scoped weapons. And it might confuse spectators if they see or don't see the same view as the player that they're watching. But I'd argue that's the case with stretch displays already. So come on Valve, roll out a field of view slider and let players embrace the beauty of native resolution. At least then, if players continue using weird resolutions, then we know they're simply being stubborn. I mean, what sort of moron would play CSGO at a strange resolution? One that is at best a placebo, and at worst, detracting from their full potential. Glad I'm not like that. Time to settle this once and for all, by loading up Quake 3. This is where it all got very popular, and where many players first decided their field of view and resolution preferences. Ironically, I had to use 4x3, because this game's support for widescreen is lacking. But I was still able to boot up the training level, and to speak with the mother of FPS players. Over 20 years on, Crash is still there, roaming the tutorial level of Quake 3. She's there to train players in the art of fragging, and to answer any burning questions they might have. And also to deliver quick-witted, dank banter. She has a lot to answer for. And there it is. Thanks, Crash.